If you enjoy the content, don't forget, like, subscribe, and click the notification bell. Okay, guys, welcome to another episode of Devon Gunsmith Diaries. And uh, what we have here today is a nice example of an almost new Beretta 486 Parallelo in 12 ball. And uh, what I've got to do today is turn something that is a, basically a mildly right-handed, supposedly straight stock, but it's actually got a bias on it for right hand. Um, and it has effectively a cast of quarter of an inch off that way. That's technically <laughs> straight. Um, but not in my book. And then I have to put cast on for a left hand shooter. So let's get into that one. I'll just get the stock off. It's just quicker doing it off camera. Apologize for that. Makes for boring YouTube TV. I understand that. But this takes, you know, a minute. These self-healing grips, they're always tight on the screwdriver. Gives your forearms like Popeye after a while. There we go. Nearly there. One of the favourite pads that I like to install. The heads of the screws tend to grip on this narrow self-healing holes. Um, I fit a lot of these. This wasn't fitted by me, but one of my colleagues in another county. But nonetheless, they are still nice to fit. So we're going to get onto this. You will now see... That is a bias for a right-handed stock. So even though that it, this may be indeed sold as a straight stock, it has clearly got a bias with the bolt for right-handed cast. So it creates a, a cast off on the stock. So we're going cast on this way to make it suit a left-hand shooter. And this has been done once before using hot lamps by another gunsmith in a different county. <clears throat> Not his fault, but it's relaxed back. And this is why we're going to have to use old school methods. Um, there'll be a video in the bottom to reflect where this came from. One of the great old gunsmiths, uh, masters of gunsmiths from Birmingham, the late great Jack Rowe. So... We're going back to first principles, cotton rags, and hot oil, and a flaming good time. We will have two. So I'll get it into the jig. You've seen it all before. And if you haven't watched the other videos I've done in the past, how to assemble the jig, um, and we'll crack on. Okay, so the side by side Beretta, and obviously we've moved moved forward a bit now. We've got it's clamped in the jig correctly. Only wood touching the wood and the action. The comb razor is placed and clamped. That maintains the ratio between the comb and the barrels, which are this way. And uh, I'll just show you that I think. So. The barrels are clamped. There's a clamp on the side, a block on the side to stop warpage. The barrels are held down. The action's fully clamped. 
finger guard is removed. In this case, I don't need to put the screws in because they've got ferrules in. And we have the comb razor just there to maintain the height and hold it in the correct place. So therefore it's clamped so it doesn't move. And it's possible to measure across here, the offset, not only just, but it's possible. Two inches to center here of my datum and it's two and a quarter inches cast off which means I've got to move it that way to go left-handed quarter inches from center cast on which is the left-handed so it's actually lost it's moved back a half inch in total through my colleagues employing the lamps and there can only be variations in humidity or the way the gun's stored that possibly might have caused that. Now, my client stores it in the case, so there's no reason for it to be concerned about that. But uh, now we need to wrap this, protect the stock with cotton uh, cloth and cotton string to hold it all together. And then we will go into the hot oil uh, methodology, which is a bit brutal. And that because these Beretta stocks are quite blonde in color these days, there is some chance that this will darken with the extra oil added to it. But it's preferable to losing the set every time you have it done. So this is, something the client has been made aware of and we'll just crack on now obviously stock bolts been removed and i've got my trusty ruler nothing complicated about this so now i'm going to start wrapping and tying it in preparation bear in mind there's a clean up afterwards i have to get rid of the linseed oil out of the action there's a whole bunch of stuff to do after the, afterwards Okay, so here's the oil heated up hot and hopefully uh, you see how that fizzes as it goes on. That's because that's humidity or moisture within the cloth. And it's also proof it's really quite hot. Okay. So if you're timid of heart, you can do it that way, just add in hot oil. Some gunsmiths prefer a research pump. I don't actually need to do hot oil very often. It's not like it's relaxing a little bit, but it's not relaxing yet. <clears throat> you can see what the tray's for now. It gets hot, that's the problem. And obviously if a research pump will work fine, as long as it's not got a polyurethane or other alternative oil finish. My intention is to soak that thoroughly with oil. Now you can then apply direct heat to it, either by a heat lamp, heat gun. Don't use a heat lamp, it'll gel up. It doesn't help. Um, direct heat by flame, made famous by the great late Jack Rowe. Um, videos on YouTube, I'll send the link down below. So you can see how he heated it. You'll see it's very much similar in the way I'm gonna do it. This is how I always used to do it until I encountered the uh, polyurethane finishes and I had a couple of epic fails that meant I had to clean the whole of the stock at great expense to myself because I lost time. So that's when I started employing the heat lamp systems, which worked fine for 90% of guns. And as I mentioned before, this gun was uh, stock bent by a colleague of mine in a different county um, 
who only uses heat lamps and unfortunately it, it lost the set so as to whether it wasn't in the clamp long enough in cooling period or what i don't know back in the day use on the old english guns you can actually get this to set within an hour but it's not always possible as you can see this is not it's not flopping enough oops i'm knocking everything this is not still this is still quite under tension so we need to increase the heat so i'm going to add a bit more oil just to be on the safe side i'll have to drain the tray out I don't want hot oil over my feet, thank you very much. <clears throat> I have toyed with a built putting a a recirc pump on this, and I think that probably would if I was doing this method constantly, I would use a heating element and a recircle recirc recirculation pump. <coughs> Excuse me. Um to do the oil, oil method some guys don't use the the rags they just use the research pump that works fine and there's nothing wrong with that indeed absolutely it's fine right but i'm going to just get rid of this hot oil that's in the tray and we're going to start flame out okay a test on the it's slackening it's starting to slacken it takes a lot of heat yeah we need a bit more heat on that <clears throat> The old school boys this is how they always did it a bit more hot oil on top 
There we go. They'd have thought nothing of this. But, uh, yeah. So again, it's beginning to move. I just need to take that comb raising block out of the way. It's, it's moving a little better. It's a lot thicker than these these pads. These these stocks are a lot thicker than the old English, so they need a bit more persuading. This is still really relatively hot oil. <clears throat> about to go. Don't have feely vision, but uh, I take this. I can actually feel that starting to get floppy now. It's definitely easing up. But as you can see, we're dealing with oil oil at its flash point, and it's getting very risky. This whole thing could go up in flames. <clears throat> in fact, you did see it catch a couple of times. I have to be ultimately very careful. And it's important to keep adding oil as well. Persist.
may be giving or it may be that it's losing its tension within the clamp. You've got to be careful that you're not actually just leaving it there. I think that's what's happening there. That becomes a bit of a problem. Because you're not getting an, an accurate situation. Yeah, it's, squeak, it's squeaking a bit. <sighs> right, well, we're going to have to apply the set anyway. There's no, good, there's no going back from this at this point. Tension all of these once again. Around all that hot oil. No going back from it now. Certainly moving very easily. It's smoking inside the cavity uh, down here. So we are getting heat into the core. It's just making sure that we can encourage it to bend in the right way. Getting a bit stinky, definite. Just measure that again. Sometimes you have to put more bend, more bend on than you perceive because the movement here has changed. God, oh, it's making my eyes water a bit now. Right, we're going to leave that and uh, I'm going to cut this off. But first, I'm going to drain off more of the all that the tray. And the trick is to cut these off 
while it's still hot and give it a clean up. Can't find me proper scissors, I'll have to use these nail scissors. I hate your eyes water a little bit. Huh, I think I need some pliers. Right, it's essential to do that while it's still hot so that you may clean the stock otherwise all of that oh that is really hot so that's beautiful all of that nourishing oil will gel up and create a nasty sticky mess like when you've cricket bats when you were kids and you put too much on it, it end up coming out sticky. Well, I did that anyway, because I was one of those eager kids that had to do everything in a hurry and not coat it. All right, there is a slight coloration in the stock. It is to be expected, I'm afraid. Now, if a customer wants me to work that back up again, I can do that. Uh, sand it back, rechecker it, all that. But this is this is where it gets brutal. And he paid a lot of money to have it adjusted before by somebody else. So this is why we've had to take this more brutal approach. Because it just wasn't holding due to humidity or any a number of reasons. Camera's probably wobbling all over the shop again. There's quite some degree of heat gone into that. The level of oil that's applied to these new gun stocks is nothing like what it was applied to in the old days. They were all this deep in colour before. In the old days, this was never an issue because they had plenty of oil on them. They put these um, combination finishes on nowadays which, uh, yeah, that's burnishing up nicely now. And that is super hot. I can barely, <coughs> excuse me, can't leave my hand in one place any for any length of time. Just giving it a burnish so that uh, the oil can clean up um, and come up with a nice shine. The client is fully aware that there may be some slight discoloration to the stock as a risk and uh, I don't actually do this very often now because most of the time my trusty heat lamps work but this is yeah that's nice it's still really hot so that's it guys uh, I'm going to leave it there for a minute 
and uh, we'll get back to the job afterwards. See you in a while. Okay, one thing final to do. Need to insert and screw back the stock bolt as the final setting is critical to place the stock bolt in its correct position with the right over back <coughs> with the bend in place. It's in fact is the stock bolts that cause a lot of the problems with these adjustments. Well, as I screw in, there should be some squeaking here as the uh, stock settles back onto the action. We have to do this while it's still warm. It's taking its time. Right, it's cinching up now. So it appears to be back on the face. Uh, certainly appears to be. <laughs> so first test. Release this and see how much it re relaxes back because they always do. And an epic fail. It's now neutral. <laughs> we now have a neutral set. It's still not quite up to enough. We need another six mil that way. <coughs> so while it's still warm, I need to clamp that back. Probably excessively. So this is how much the stock bolt and the bias, because the stock bolts are drilled, the sockets are drilled at an angle, which causes the bias. I can only hope that that will remain a viable bend. We won't know until the morning now. <clears throat> so that needs to stay exactly where it is. I mean, it certainly looks like a nice bend there. Uh, this is a shot angle that I would observe. It's actually quite a, a uh, pronounced bend at present. Bear it, it will spring back to a degree. So for centre line, I've extended it a bit. It's nearly 35. So 50 is a centre line and 55 which is where it was that would have been where the center line was so i pushed it over quite hard because we need to get that to hold a set if i while i'm holding it in this way if i release the clamp there I release this clamp one-handed work it's never a, never an answer you can see that that relaxes a fair bit Having to swap hands while I hold the camera. It's not the best. Not the, you can't see the adjust the, the bias quite so much now. I have a centre point of 45 millimetres. So that is the set I actually need, and that's where I need to leave it uh, to cool down and set. So that, that bias and adjustment there. That's the final set, guys. So I don't know if I can see that you can, oh yeah there you go you can see the adjustment more more pronounced down here <clears throat> hopefully see look at the angle of the attack there with the stock bolt it's really pronounced so we are going against the geometry that was set at the factory in this case and this is what the the bugbear of having stock bolts inside rather than having it mounted in the old way at the action <clears throat> we'll have to just leave it and truth will be tested in the morning
Okay, so let's take this down. Natural spring back always happens. So it's quarter of an inch cast off now instead of cast on. There's a full half inch movement there. <clears throat> So as well as the clamp block, there's additional blocks to stop twist on the barrel as it racks. And there's a barrel clamp there, all in plywood. So only wood touches the gun at any time and a plywood bed for it to rest on. So wherever possible, we keep it clean and supported. There's the comb ramp which again is just there to stop it dropping while it was being set. And there we have it. Okay, so now the inevitable lock cleanup and everything that was required after an oil. An oil bending. Because inevitably this gummy residue gets everywhere. Seriously nuisance. And the cleanup can sometimes take as long as the job. This is an almost brand new Beretta in many ways, side by side. I don't see many side by side Berettas brand new these days, but they do exist. So there we have it, that's not too bad. Check there's no gummy residue anywhere. Obviously that didn't come to any harm. nice <clears throat> well at this point we remove the stock bolt again which seems counterintuitive somehow so that we can get the lock off and give it a darn good clean as there will be some residue we need to clean out of the lock. Fortunately, it's 
it's a natural product, linseed oil, so nothing too bad there. And the lock is well maintained, so it's just to remove that sticky residue that may remain. We'll need a tiny bit of meth or alcohol or Everclean if you're American. Everclear, I think it is. Just to remove those little bits of residue. When it's heated, it always gets a bit gummy, so while we go in there. Fortunately, the way the stock sits tightly against the action frame, it doesn't seep through too much. That certainly isn't detrimental to the grease that's already there, so that's very fortunate. There we go. With that, it's that simple. Just get the stock bolt out and all the washers. Just essentially make sure there's no residue left inside here. And then just to reassemble. Just to reiterate, you see how much cast is automatically set by the way that the offset for the stock bolt has been set to, to create a right hand um, cast off. So we've actually bent it the other way to create cast on. That's why you have to use the, the more severe hot oil approach, which is not generally used by most gunsmiths these days. Just sighting that down there. Make sure we've got that. Yeah. Slightly off camera, sorry. Just to nip it, nip it back up again. Nice. Not a not a product placement, but kickies. I use these all the time. Pleased to see my colleagues do as well. Probably one of the finest aftermarket butt pads that you can have, and certainly the most reliable.
the nature of these pads is that the self-sealing hole for the screw inevitably grips the screwdriver. Go finally done, lovely. So after the cleanup, I'm going to very briefly clamp it back in the jig in order to ascertain that with all that movement and and stuff, we will uh, still have it set correctly. Measuring from center, we've now got a 45 and 43 offset. Bear in mind that the center is 50 mil. So now it's cast off or yeah, cast on, it's back to front, isn't it? It's now cast on a quarter of an inch approximately. Whereas before it was cast off about a quarter of an inch, so it's a full half inch movement that way. And hopefully that will remain the same and, and stay there. And um, I'll be good. I think that's it pretty much for it, guys. <laughs>